Hey folks, Knox with IT Inspired here. So you want to learn SQL. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you about this. I actually began my tech career with SQL. I was interviewing for a job back in 2012, and they told me they wanted to hire me because they could tell how passionate I was and how bad I wanted to be there, but they simply be couldn't because I didn't have SQL on my resume, essentially a checkbox. Um, so that night, I signed up for an intro to SQL course, and I wasn't going to be stopped uh, ever again with for not having uh, the right things on my resume. Um, you know, it's it's well, we could talk about that some other time. Uh, but here I am today, and here you are. You've decided you want to get into SQL for uh, whatever reasons or whatever that means, um, and you're going okay. I want to do this. What do I do now? Let's go. I, I'm ready to SQL. I, I'm ready to be a, a SQL guy or gal. Um, well, the first bit of good news for you is that it's completely free uh, to get started. But SQL is massive. It's so big that we have to talk a little bit about it first before we can just dive in and install it and start typing script. Uh, it's so big that many people dedicate their entire careers to doing nothing but SQL. Uh, and not just this all-encompassing term SQL either. There's actually three main roles that people who work with SQL choose to go into. But before we can even talk about that, let's just talk about what SQL even is first. What is a database? Well, um, a database in its, in its simplest form is an Excel spreadsheet that just got too big. Uh, so they had to chop it up into little pieces. Um, let's oversimplify this and talk about it right now. Uh, let's, let's pretend I've got this Excel worksheet where I want to track movies. Um, this year, uh, The Shape of Water won Best Film. So let's say I've got this title here, this title column. Uh, we're going to type in The Shape of Water. And we're going to type it in correctly, actually. Uh, so here we go. And it came out in the year 2017. And the director was Guillermo del Toro, I believe. Yeah, that's got to be right. And we'll clean it up a little bit here. So pretend for a moment that I gathered every single data point, every single bit of data on this movie, every actor, every nomination, uh, the day that it came out, the day that it came out for digital release, the day that it came out for DVD release, you get the idea. Um, there would be seemingly an infinite amount of data points. So what a database would do is it would take all of these items that are relevant to this one movie and spread it out over a bunch of different worksheets, which they called tables. And it would link them all together with some sort of identifier, usually an ID field. So let's say this is ID1. For the first record, this row would be called a record in SQL. Um, for the first record, this is ID1. And instead of having all of this data in one place, we would move it to a different table. Let's paste it here. And we would have an ID field here for one. So now I would be able to look at this and let's do the same thing for the director real quick. And let's do ID again of one. So now I would look at this sheet one and go, ah, for ID one, the movie was Shape of Water. So then I would see, oh, ID1 is over here, and the director was Guillermo del Toro. And ID1 was here the year that it came out was 2017. Does that make sense? This is called a relational database because each table has some sort of relationship to the next table. Um, and the big thing here is this ID. So that's kind of what SQL is. Uh, it takes very, very, very large data sets where we can collect a tremendous amount of information on one record uh, and spread it out over a bunch of different tables. And the reason we do that is because when we need to go collect this data later, uh, for whatever reason, uh, we can do it quickly because we can isolate specifically which tables we want to go get instead of pulling every single data point uh, that is specific to that row from the table. So now that we've got a little bit of an idea as to what a relational database is and what SQL is, um, let's talk about those job roles again. So like I said, there's, there's three different types of jobs uh, that you can go into if you're interested in SQL. And the first one is, is the development role, if you're a developer. 
And specifically, they call this a back-end developer. And why do they call it a back-end developer? Well, let's, let's grab the square so we can make this pretty. Pretend you're out here on this computer. Let's, this is going to be a computer. Yep, that's a computer. <laughs> um, and let's say you're on the Internet. And you connect to the Internet through this computer right here. And you go through the Internet to a website where you want to apply for a bank loan. So you're on this website here. Um, this is this little square. We're going to call that a website. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to put this little text box in and put www.loan.com or something. I don't even know if that's a real website, uh, but that's what I'm just going to put right here so that you know this is a website. You type in all of this information into the website and you click submit. What do you think actually happens? What is actually probably happening is that this website was nothing more than some sort of text document uh, that gets manipulated into looking like a website where you can type in your information. That information then gets shot down into a server that you never see that is holding a SQL server. All of your data that you typed into that sheet is going to be injected down here into a database. So the, all that information about you, your home address, your work address, your income, your social security number, your, your wife's or, or husband's and your spouse's income, how many children you have, all of these items are going to get shot down into this database. And then further, since it's probably, since it's a bank loan we're talking about, chances are they're going to pull your credit from a different what place over the internet, and that's going to get injected into the database too. You can see how the amount of data on you is just going to build up so quickly, and that's why it has to go into a relational database to get spread out. The developer's job is going to be to, to type the code in this database so that, um, so that, you, that it can handle inserting the data and manipulating the data in such a way that you can um, proceed with getting a loan. So you would actually be typing the code that makes this application work right there, that application. If we can, there we go, terrible arrow. <laughs> it's going to be making that application work. So as a developer, that's what you would be doing. Um, making the the front end applications work. So you can see real quickly that this website would be the front end because that's what you the end user sees and this SQL server would be the back end because that's what's actually making the stuff work. Um, no one actually sees it but that is what is the the engine that is is driving the train. Okay? That's the first job. The second job is going to be a report developer. Um, so a report developer would then take this data, and you know what, I'm going to use this arrow this time. It's going to take the data that's located here, and it's going to uh, transport it to a new database or a centralized storage area and write reports on the data up here. So that way, we want to see if you're the bank and you want to get, you've got all of this data, what do you do with it? Let's learn about it. Let's see who our customers are. Let's run reports on the data that we've collected on all of these applications. You would be looking for things like, uh, you know, um, in the month of December, who is the most likely to be, uh, you know, inputting a loan um, for, f at our bank? Is it going to be um, males in certain age range or females in different age range? And why do you think that's going on? And if it is predominantly females, shouldn't we um, gear our marketing campaigns to be more spe specifically targeting them? You would take this information as a manager or a CEO or anyone in the marketing department and try and make it actionable. You would report on this information. You could see why that's a very important job. Now, Similarly, with this reporting job, um, it's, it's kind of become a new phenomenon in recent history where people are getting into different tools to report on it, and this is called business intelligence. Um, interactive tools like Tableau um, are becoming super popular. Look at how pretty that is. Um, so this tool, Tableau, would take that data and make it interactive. So you, the end user, me, the marketing person or the manager, you would be able to actually 
click on filters and drill down and see what's really going on with your data. Um, a direct competitor to it that is often included in certain Office 365 subscriptions is Power BI. Um, Power BI is super popular uh, and growing in, in um, popularity and, and usage out there because it's it's so easily integrated with your Azure environments like Office 365. Um, you know, there's differences between these tools. Uh, in my opinion, I've used both quite extensively in my career. Um, I, I like Tableau a lot. I have nothing against Power BI, but Tableau was uh, very easy to pick up and get moving. And you will probably see on the IT Inspired YouTube page coming in, in the near future some, some Tableau videos on how to get started in this specific tool. Um, there is very good training on Tableau's website on how to do that, but we're going we're gonna to show you how to do some tips and tricks too outside of, outside of the basics. So anyways, that's the reporting side. Uh, so in quick summary, the developer writes data to the database. The reporter, or the business intelligence specialist, reads data from the database. Now what's the third role? The third role is the DBA or database administrator. They are all about maintaining the database and securing the database. So who can access it? How do they access it? What data do they have access to? Uh, what are the failover policies and plans to recover in case of an emergency? Uh, what is the high availability strategy of our database? Uh, is there some sort of if this database goes down, does it fail over to the next database so that it keeps going? Um, backup strategies and indexing, blah, 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 blah. Not so much involved with the code or the reporting, but actually maintaining the instance of the database itself. This is a big step away from the development world where you could see how the developer, the back-end developer would be all about code and making sure the application works. And the reporting developer would be making sure the data is accurate and making it actionable. Whereas the DBA, that job is way more akin to a systems and infrastructure role where they're interested in what type of disks is our data stored on um, and what type of uh, RAM or CPU utilization is, is the SQL environment requiring? And why does that user in HR have access to the accounting database and vice versa? Uh, so uh, that is much more of a sysadmin role. So anyways, um, now that we've talked a little bit about that, uh, now you've got a feel for the three roles. And what's kind of cool is I've held all three roles in my career, so I can speak to them um, quite a bit. Uh, let's talk a little bit about SQL itself. SQL is a language. That's what the L stands for, Structured Query Language. But like most languages, there are dialects. Um, so when we're talking about SQL, yes, there is this all-encompassing, uh, you know, term SQL. Oop, still on arrow. Oops, sorry there. <laughs> there is this all-encompassing term SQL, but what we're talking about, when what we're going to go through, is a dialect, and that is Microsoft's dialect called Transact SQL, Transact SQL, or T SQL for short. So yes, some commands that we execute in this Microsoft SQL Server environment would work in a MySQL or a Postgres SQL environment. There are a lot of commands that won't. Um, they would be specific to the Microsoft SQL Server tool. Um, so uh, we're, we're definitely going to focus on the Microsoft side of things and get you up and running. Um, now that you kind of have a crash course, uh, we're going to talk to you now about installing SQL Server. So that is primarily a DBA's role. But you as the learner, you as the guy who wants to lab this and maybe learn how to do development or maybe learn how to do reporting, you're going to have to suffer through it. You want to get it up and running in your environment too, right? Installation of SQL Server is its own bear. So I'm going to stop the video here and we're going to do a, a separate video on installing SQL Server following this next. All right.